So you want to be the next fashion it girl? Well, I have the ultimate guide that includes spring summer trends, aesthetic cores, and also just certain fashion elements to include into your everyday look. So that way when you're walking down the street, you're breaking necks. Before we even get started, I do want to just preface and say that I'm so easily influenced when it comes to new trends. And that's mainly just because I love experimenting with my fashion. But there's probably going to be a few things that you absolutely love, that you absolutely hate. But these are just things that I've seen while scrolling on TikTok. So if there's something that I've missed, definitely leave it down below in the comments. But let's get started. So the two core aesthetics that we're going to be touching on is Bloquette Core and Mermaid Core. I've been seeing these all over social media. So I easily see them in the spring and carrying through into the summer. I know when it comes to these core aesthetics, everyone is very opinionated. But when it comes to me, I personally love them. I think the names are super fun. I don't know who has a creative mind to come up with these. But when it comes down to it, all of these trends are really recycled. Bloquette Core is really just a revival of 90s Y2K nostalgia. So the word bloquette does stem from two words, bloke and coquette. So when you put it together, it really is just our modern day sporty chic. And you can see examples of this in Bella Hadid style, Ruby Lynn style, and we're seeing a lot of jerseys, mesh, country representation, numbers, a lot more like blocky silhouettes, but then combining it with girly elements like bows and lace and ruffles. If you're thinking to yourself, wait, I've seen this before, you probably have. I grew up in a Latino community and so I saw this a lot with soccer fans and soccer players, especially the girls who had to wear braids to get their hair out of their face and were just like accessorized with little bows. I also saw on TikTok that Blackhead Core was also really popular among UK kids and the working class in the early 2000s. So I mean, whether you are a sports girly or not, I think this is a really fun trend to play into. And because it's become so popular, you'll now see jerseys in like super cute pastel colors instead of just like traditional sport teams. So if you're gonna be executing the bloquette core aesthetic, what it really comes down to is balance because we have boyish elements, we have girly elements, and we want to make sure that they coexist within the fit. Let's talk about mermaid core now, which on the spectrum for me, bloquette core is right here. Mermaid core? It's at the bottom for me and I don't know what it is because I'm actually obsessed with mermaids. I don't know whether this core aesthetic is on the rise because of the release, The Little Mermaid, but it's very ethereal, very feminine, very dainty, and I love that it plays with texture. So we're seeing things like crochet, sequins, pearls, linen, tiered skirts. Overall, it really just is beachy and boho at the same time. So it's just what are the colors of the beach and how can I make it into an outfit? And because it is water and beach themed, you can literally use all of your swimwear, whether they're bikini tops, cover-ups, tankinis, one pieces. We're incorporating all of that into an everyday look. So really the goal here is just layering, but it's layering that isn't making us look too bulky and still keeping it very, very feminine. Let's talk about some fashion trends now, and we're going to start off with my favorite, which are jorts. I absolutely love jorts. Again, it's coming back from the 90s Y2K, and you can style them in so many different directions, but what we're seeing right now, again, is just juxtaposing them with feminine elements. So because jorts are already so baggy and very boyish, wearing it with a corset, a crop top, or even heels. And because jorts already flare out quite a bit, you can have a lot of fun with silhouette and do something that's either really baggy or something that's a little bit more balanced. I personally own like a good six, seven pair of jorts, so I'm gonna include a few of my favorite brands right on the screen right now so that way you can look them up on eBay or Depop. Our next trend is dresses but they're the dresses that are sitting in our closet that are most formal, fanciest, and prettiest and what we're gonna do is just like tone it down a crap ton and we're doing this by wearing them with more flat shoes or sneakers doing a lot of layering and accessorizing but accessorizing with unconventional items like ties when it comes to styling this trend you really have to think to yourself how would i not style this because a tie doesn't make sense sneakers doesn't really make sense adding more layers doesn't really make sense but together it looks really fun and cohesive our next trend is men's button up shirts i never in a million years thought that i would be wearing a men's button up shirt but it's already a very timeless piece but what we're seeing now is more personalization DIY elevating it just a little bit more this gives us a good excuse to start looking in the men's section and looking through all of those button up shirts and then giving yourself a little project of maybe painting it yourself screen printing it adding spikes and chains and again playing with silhouette so doing something either very baggy or doing something a little bit more fitted and then playing with layering so here's just a few examples on the screen but it really just is taking menswear and 
and incorporating it into a woman's everyday look. I personally like it with a more baggy look and then surprising you with a very feminine shoe. We finally eased our way into shoes now and loafers are out. Platforms are out, just kidding. No, they're not because petite girls like me absolutely need that height. So I don't wear my platforms as often, but they'll never permanently be removed from my wardrobe. What's on the rise though are Mary Janes in a whole bunch of different colors and styles. And I think we mainly have Sandy Leong to blame for this. She really has been a pioneer when it comes to all things feminine and dainty. Only the price tag on a lot of her pieces are outside of a girl's budget. So I've been rocking my Mary Janes from the swap meet that I only got for a freaking dollar and not only are they cute, but they're super comfy too. On the other hand, we have sneakers. They're still very flat and comfortable, but just a little bit more boyish. So we've been seeing Sambas and Gazelles everywhere. I personally don't have any, but what I do have are some Nike Cortezes, which are pretty flat again and very springy with this lilac color. I also wanna give credit where credit is due, so please fact check me on this, but I believe it's a Chinese trend where you're actually DIYing, personalizing your own sneakers and making it a little bit more coquette. So satin ribbons, pearl, on the side, lace trimming. And so that just seems super pretty. So I'm gonna be doing that to these Nike Cortezes in a future thrift flip video. So if you wanna watch that, make sure you are subscribed. So with shoes, you gotta accessorize with socks. And a word of advice, please, please do not wear your Mary Janes without socks, you will thank me later. But we've been seeing socks in a whole bunch of different lengths and colors. Personally, I like the ruffles and white better just because I feel like it's a lot more versatile, but doing something black and lace, white lace and ruffle, and even something as long as this to be pairing with your Mary Janes and sneakers. Onto the lace skirt trend. This is gonna be a little quick one. I feel like we saw this at the height of Coachella. Every girl was wearing this just to add a little bit more texture to your outfit. And really what you're going for is sheer, tiered and ruffled. You guys are gonna be tired of me saying it, but it does add a girly touch to your outfit. So doing it for like a mermaid core look or even just wearing it with an oversized button up blouse like this, the juxtaposition, perfect. Our next trend is the tie. I feel like this one might be one that you either really hate or really love. I at first did not understand the whole tie trend. I was like, why, why, I don't get it. But now that I have it like fully styled, I'm just like, you know what? It's grown on me. I actually really like it. And I feel like the slimmer, thinner ties are a lot easier to style. Not only wearing them regularly with a knot, but wrapping them around your neck, wearing it as a scarf, maybe even a headband, but also doing some sort of personalization or DIY again. So we're seeing star ties, adding chains and eyelets to them. And really just personalizing your tie so that it better fits your style. And I'm gonna be using this word again, but unconventional. How would you unconventionally style a tie? I feel like people's minds immediately goes to a button-up shirt something that has a spread collar and so now we're seeing them styled with just like regular crew neck shirts or even dresses and not treating it as an essential to finish like a suit but more as an accessory to top off an outfit the last trend i want to talk about is longer hemline so micro minis are over and done with they are out and maybe people have finally come to their senses and i actually absolutely love micro minis but they're just not really practical especially if you're someone who who doesn't like for their booty to be out. Also, if you're just self-conscious about your legs, knee length, midi, and maxi lengths are totally in. And I've been seeing this a lot with plaid prints, pleated construction. So I'll have a few examples up on the screen, but we've seen Bella Hadid in this. You can do something more of like an alternative route or something more schoolgirl. So even though I am a fan of the micro mini, I also like these longer hemlines just because it makes it a lot more comfortable to walk around in public, especially someone like me being a girl who has to take Metro to get around. It just makes you feel safe and secure, which is a pretty sad thing to say, but like men in LA suck. I nearly forgot about one last trend and it's dresses over pants. So last season was all about skirts over pants, but for some reason, this whole dress pant combo is a lot more accepted and welcomed. But we're seeing this with flare pants and jeans and I never thought we'd be seeing this again, but it has us experimenting with layering. So let's do a quick little recap on how to be this season's fashion it girl. So we are seeing a really big 90s Y2K influence, just making it a little bit more lax. While combining feminine and masculine elements, and we are seeing less bodycon. Unless we're doing mermaid core, of course that's still very feminine. And what I love especially about these trends is that they're diverting from the male gaze and focusing in things like silhouette, layering, and most importantly, comfort. I did try to include as many visuals as possible throughout the entire video, but I also made a Pinterest board that you can 
can reference anytime you need some inspo or if you need help when you're choosing an outfit. So I have that link down below in the description box, but also if I miss any other trends, comment them down below so we can get a little conversation going. But as always, y'all, I do post videos at least once a week. I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Man,